On today's show, I'm going to talk more about the deep spiritual things and especially about the Holy Spirit and how He will support you in all of these areas that I'm talking about. See you soon. Did you know that there is a world beyond what you can see with your physical eyes? How can you know what comes from the light versus the darkness? Alan Strudwick wants to help you discern God's truth from the dangers of false religion, false teachers, pseudoscience philosophies, and demonic influences waiting to deceive even the very elite. And now, here's your host of The Truth Project, Alan Strudwick. Hi, welcome to The Truth Project. I'm Alan Strudwick. In last week's show, I was mentioning it about the whole idea when I was in the New Age of how we actually had come up with or needed to come up with an answer if all of the Christians actually went through that thing called rapture. When I was in the New Age and our only answer at that time was that, well, what we'll do is we will put out information and put out all sorts of things saying that the reason that these religious people, the Christians, were taken away or disappeared was simply because they were the lowest evolved on the planet. That's actually what we believe. It's what my guru taught me. I mentioned this in the first show, but to remind you again, my guru said that I had been here over 300,000 lifetimes evolving and evolving spiritually, but that Christians were here for their first lifetime. So the perfect answer for us in the New Age to then put out deception was simply to say that the Christians had been taken off the planet via UFOs that the flyer of that or the controller of that um, UFO fleet that would take the Christians off would take us to take them to another planet and evolve them spiritually, which is just ridiculous. But that was what we came up with. Half of the New Age stuff that I was in seems ridiculous when I look back at it now. But the interesting thing is that they the, the person that they in the New Age decided to put as the controller of all of these UFOs and taking the Christians was Jesus. Isn't that interesting? But they called him also Lord Maitreya, which is just another New Age um, spirit thing that they talk about in many different um, areas. But um, I won't go into that. But it's just the fact that the whole UFO. And it's an interesting thing when we think of that, because today, that's why I wanted to re-mention it, today, In the season we're in, we're hearing everywhere all about UFOs and UFO sightings and more about that all over again. And I can tell you now, even though I'm not in the New Age and I'm not around those people that I was around before, this was part of their plan, that once things started to get to that 30 years and things could start to be implemented, it became the fact that that information had to go out. So that's been going out for a while and then it got stopped and then it's been going out there again. And why? To get everyone used to it. To get everybody used to the fact that when there is a rapture and everyone's gone to heaven, that the excuse that we put off by the New World Order leaders, the globalists, is the fact that they had to be taken away because they're not spiritually evolved. In fact, in everything that I've talked about, from the Course of Miracles, when I talk to you about that, other information I've given you, the biggest thing that the enemy does is play on ego and on pride, which is what his fall was all about from heaven. And the, the reason the enemy does that is he, he's trying to appeal that, the, that you can be a God and therefore you're higher than other people. But the problem is if you then have 6 billion, 7 billion people on the planet that all think they're God, you're going to have a problem. That's why there's other things that have been implemented as well. But the, another thing just to throw in is the whole population control thing. That was one of the things that we also had that we would actually start to look at what are the ways of how the globalists and we could support them through religion is actually start to depopulate the planet in such a way. I mean, I even saw a sign recently, it was shocking, in um, in Vancouver where it had, uh, uh, what do they call them, like a billboard and it was all about the best thing you can do for your child and it has a picture of this beautiful baby. The best thing you could do for this child is never have any other children and it's from an organisation that's all about that, that we had set up, as I said, when I was in the New Age. But not there now, now I'm in the truth. And so I want to share with you, because I've shared a lot of things that for some people could be, oh, that's that's kind of like, you know, sci-fi stuff, or it's this or it's that. It's not really, it is truth, and there's a lot happening that sometimes we're not not totally aware of, but we don't have to be. I'm telling you this information so that you're equipped, but more importantly, 
I'm wanting to show you the truth. I'm wanting to show you the, the, the equipping and the ways to do things in your life through all of this. There's no fear. You're not meant to have fear. We're meant to have faith. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited that the believers of Jesus right now are rising up. They're rising up and questioning things, rising up and, and looking at things and, and asking what is the real truth. So the more of us that stand up with truth, and to me, the absolute truth is the scripture. And I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit and give you some scriptures on that. And there's a reason for that. I was um, talking to some people just earlier and it was, I was talking about, uh, it took me almost three years to get baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, that didn't mean I was against the Holy Spirit. What it was was that it's spiritual. Remember, I was spiritual experiences. I had demonic angels visit me, spirit, all sorts of things happened when I was in the new age. Then when I became um, a believer of Jesus, it was like, what am I going to do? How, now, how, I'm still picking stuff up spiritually in the church I went to, in events I would go to. So what is that? And I, it took me a while. I was cautious. And why? Because I was deceived. It had nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. It had to do with me. I still didn't trust myself. I still needed to have some confidence. Now, I would test the spirits. But even when I would know, okay, that spirit's from God, I still was like, I'm I'm not, I don't want to get deceived again. I mean, I was, I I went through a whole grieving process when I came out of the new age. I first was angry. I wanted to go and kill my guru when I realized the truth. I was uh, upset that no one would talk to me who were my friends for years. They took everything away from me. Um, I, there was a lot going on through that whole process and that took time and the, and the you know, de, de brainwashing as well. But at the same time, I, I just didn't want to delve into that spirit thing. It, even though I could pick things up when you know, the pastor would say the spirit's moving, there's going to be healing or this is happening. I could see it and I could feel it. I could, when they would go prophetic, I would feel the spirit in the room that was then as the Holy Spirit talking with these people, giving the gifts of the spirit. I was aware of it. However, I needed to to just do it my time and in my way. So I'm, I tested the Holy Spirit for a long time, as I said, almost three years. And then finally, when I was being water baptized, I actually uh, came out of the water and I, I felt the Holy Spirit totally on me and in me in that moment. And from then on, I was always aware of the Holy Spirit. And he was, I'm so glad I took the time. I'm so glad I took the time just to, tr- just to learn, to trust, him also to learn how he works, how he doesn't work. And one of the things that I did is I, I went into the Bible and I found every scripture I could that talked about the Holy Spirit in some way or the Spirit of God because I needed to learn. I needed to do that. So uh, I suggest everybody does that because then you build your own confidence. But for me, I want to share some of those scriptures that um, that really mean a lot to me because to me, says I've had some, how will I say this? I've had some people come to me and say, how come you've never gone back into the new age? And, and first of all, that's just weird. Why, why, would, why would I go back into darkness? But then when I've talked to them, I've realized that some of them don't understand how dark the new age is and how deceptive it actually is. It's just, it's just still the, the works of the enemy, but it's all sugar-coated and all looks good and all nice. Or as I showed you in the last show, that they, they sugarcoat, use the same words and do different things like that. So here I am at a point of, okay, well, they, they say, how come you haven't fallen back into the new age? Now, I need to let you know, there was people that I knew that um, I, you can imagine once I became a believer in Jesus, I radically wanted to evangelize the new age. And I did. I would do meetings and rallies and all sorts of things and have hundreds of new age people coming to the Lord. I wouldn't actually say I had, I had become a believer in Jesus. I would actually put up an advertising in a new age town or something. And I put up saying, I'm trained and master in this, 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 this. In fact, in my book, when you get it, you'll see that I'm trained and I was trained in probably 20, 30, 40 different spiritual practices as a master. And it was interesting because uh, I would just put that list up and all these new age people would come and I would just start sharing my testimony and miracles would show up and people would get touched by the Holy Spirit. They'd feel the spirit. You got to remember, I said this before, new age people really feel the spirit. They're hungry for that spirit. So we would we would demonstrate that. But it was interesting because a lot of people would come to me after after them giving their heart to the Lord. They'd say, you know, I could feel the spirit, but it was a different spirit than before. They felt something different. That's because it was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't come to bring conviction in a bad way or an evil way. He comes in love and in respect and encouragement. 
And so it, the Holy Spirit for me then became almost like my lifeline and also my tool to be able to have whenever I'm around people. There's been times that I've come against New Age people and that are really angry at me and, and against me. And I, and I, and I think that's it's quite funny now because I'll just tell you a quick little story. When I was in the New Age, and this is for, for all of you to, to understand how to talk to a New Age person. When I was in the New Age, Christians would come, believers in Jesus would come to sometimes my seminar, but they'd be outside in the hotel, foyers, and they'd have signs. Yep, I'd have people picketing against me, saying that I was possessed or that I was evil or whatever. Now, guess what? That's true. I had 14 demons inside of me. I was possessed, but I didn't know I was. I was deceived. So them telling me I was possessed or them yelling at me and telling me that I'm, you know, like the son of the devil and blah, 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 that didn't do anything for me. But there was a one couple that actually came to me and sat down with me and just explained everything about Jesus, just explained his love, explained the Holy Spirit, explained all of that. And I had never heard of any of that before. Now, I didn't become a believer on that day, but I still today remember that. And I believe that when they did that and they spoke to me like that, it actually planted a seed inside of me ready because God knew at some point I would be coming home back to him. And um, so the reason I'm saying that is that you, you, how will I put this? You can't actually um, conjure up anything like we used to have to do in the new age. The Holy Spirit is actually already real. He's already there. He already wants to be with you. He already wants to work with you. You heard the scriptures in the last session about the spiritual gifts and the fruits of the Spirit that He wants to have. I, I witnessed those. Okay, so I want to share some of these scriptures and give you even more meaning behind them if I can. But I definitely encourage you to find out as much as you can, study the scriptures, look them up about the Holy Spirit, ask your leaders that you have about the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible talks about the Holy Spirit. I've been in some churches and they said, you're not allowed to talk about the Holy Spirit. I go, why not? And then they give me this explanation. I go, well, Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit. Why can't I? Jesus actually said he was going to send him as a helper. Why can't I mention that? So um, let me just start. First one, Romans in chapter 8, verse 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. That was very powerful for me because especially coming out of the New Age, I felt weak because I wasn't, psyching myself anymore. I wasn't doing it on my own anymore. I had to trust something else. I had to trust God and, um, and I had to trust Jesus. So therefore I had now the Holy Spirit would help me in my weakness. How powerful is that? That I actually, He would help me. That's an amazing promise for me. Um, then in Acts 2.38, it, said, it says, Then Peter said to them, Repent, every one of you. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus, the Messiah, for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it interesting that when you are baptized, that's exactly what happened to me. When you are baptized for the remissions of your sins, it says that you shall receive the gift of the Spirit. So, uh, that's exactly what happened to me. I was being baptized and I came up and I actually received the gift of the Holy Spirit. It was that powerful for me. And I'm going to continue with this and going through the Holy Spirit in the next segment. Did you know that there has been a 30 year top secret plan conceived by Far Eastern gurus? This plan has been deceptively hidden in the New Age religion to try and convert Christians and Jews in the West to embrace the false gods of Hinduism and Buddhism. Over two decades ago, Alan Strudwick was chosen as a child to be trained by leading gurus in the Hindu religion, whose mission was to infiltrate the church and convert Christians into Eastern religions. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. In this book, Alan retells his life journey of deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices that ends when he has a miraculous encounter with God the Father and Jesus. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age, Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Astrology, Reincarnation, Aura Cleansing, Astral Travel, Psychic and Palm Readings, Tarot Cards, Reiki Healing, and so much more. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. 
story. Understand that yoga is a demonic gateway opening doors for spiritual attacks. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. Welcome back. As I said before, I was talking about the Holy Spirit and I want to continue on that. It is so important for me to be able to show you um, just the importance of the Holy Spirit. But I don't want to just be my words. That's why I read a lot of scripture. I want you to understand. You know, sometimes when I run seminars and people go, really, I never knew that scripture existed. Really? Is that really what it says? Is that what it says? Now, that shows me that sometimes people don't go and search for themselves. I really want to encourage you just for the moment. I want to encourage you. Please get into the Word. Some people go, oh, but I don't know how to do that. Well, as I said the other day, just get a concordance. Just find a Word and study it and look at it. And just do, do a Word study rather than just uh, having to read it in that, in that sense. But it's so powerful. And that's why I'm encouraging you to get in and find out about the Holy Spirit. Search out every Scripture that has it. And read them for yourself so you understand what they... And ask the Holy Spirit, what does that mean for you? And how does that affect you? Giving you revelation. Now, this next one's a good one for me. After I became a believer and I started to go out to evangelize, um, this scripture was given to me by, I believe, uh, the Holy Spirit. And it says Acts 1.8. And so it's in Acts 1.8. And it says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, I, I thought, wow, OK, so I'm going to receive power. Remember, in the New Age, I had to psych up the power. Now I'm being told I'm going to receive power. So I'm going to receive power from heaven, from somewhere, not from me, from heaven. That makes it easy for me. That makes it easy for you. You don't have to be running around and feel good or feel ready or whatever. And I said this on one of the other shows. Sometimes when I've prayed for people or spoken to people and they've been affected, it's probably sometimes when I feel the worst or not even the, the most spiritual in one sense. But you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So therefore, I know that God wants me to use power for certain different things. And then I love this other part. And here's the reason. There's always a purpose for something, always a purpose for something when, when God's involved. And it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now that to me is evangelism and spreading the word. So I then, when I seek God, I actually get through the Holy Spirit to receive power, power when the Holy Spirit comes upon me. So I get to not use my strength. I get to use His power in all the different things that I do, especially if I'm going out witnessing and going and evangelizing or even talking to people and using that. Even in these shows that I'm doing, I'm constantly waiting for the Holy Spirit to come upon me so that I have power enough on my words because the Bible says that there's the anointing on the words. It's the anointing that destroys yokes. And so I, I wait for that before I do things because of that, for that reason. Okay, John 14, 15 to 17. So John 14, 15 to 17. I will pray the, to the Father. This is Jesus talking. I will pray to the Father that he will give you another helper. So he's about to go back to heaven. And here he's saying, I'm going to pray to the Father to give you another what? A helper. Okay that he may abide with you forever. See, God gave me, when I learned that, the Holy Spirit is a helper for me because I need help. I do, <laughs> seriously. Um, you should ask my kids. They go, really, Dad, you talk, you, you teach, you do stuff? Because when I'm at home, they say, you, you don't make sense at all. Um, so pray to the Father. He will give you another helper and that he may abide with you forever. So he's there forever with you. He's not going to leave. And I love this part, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. So the world doesn't understand this. If they're not believers in Jesus, they don't understand it. But that the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you will know him, for he dwells with you and will be with you. Isn't it awesome that Jesus would leave us and send another helper to us? That's incredible. I just love the fact that Jesus loves me that much that he would do that and have that. So now I know he's a helper and he'll give me power to do things that I need to do. And then John 16, 12, 15 says, 
However, when he, the spirit of truth, and that keeps showing up. Remember, I said that in the first show. That that's why this is called the truth project. It's about the spirit behind that. The, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. OK, so he's a helper. He's giving me power. Now he's going to guide me to truth. Sometimes I'm not sure. Do I do this? Do I do that? How do I follow you, Lord? Am I meant to do that? Am I meant to move over here? He's the one that will guide me. He's the one that will give me truth. Isn't it incredible? All right. And then for he will not speak on his own authority. OK, so he's going to give me the spirit of truth that will guide me to all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things. So that tells me that the Holy Spirit in me and with me, power, help, guiding me truth, but also is not going to do it on his own. He's doing it from the Father uh, and the wisdom from the authority of the Father. That's incredible. Love it. Romans 15, 13. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in the hope of the power of the Holy Spirit. Here we are told about power again, but that we may have hope filled. I mean, there's a whole thing of faith. The scriptures about faith, that faith is the substance of things hoped for, hoped for. We're given hope. If you don't have any hope, then you ask the Holy Spirit. And it says here that by the power, he'll give you hope, hope and fill you with joy and peace. Oh, come on. How many more of us would love to have more joy and more peace? especially in the in trials that happen in the world, especially in, in things. Now, you know, it's interesting. I know there's a world problems going on and pandemic and world shutting and everything happening. And it's horrible and it's tragic. However, whenever I talk to my 91 year old mother, she says, I went through this and we went through this flu. We went through that. We went through the swine. Thing, we went through smallpox. We went through polio. We went through, and she says, I'm still here. And she gives all credit to God for it, too, by the way. And so it's like we live in hope and we're meant to live in that hope, not our own hope. OK, 1 Corinthians 2.13. Things, uh, these things we also speak. I love this part. Not in words which are man's wisdom, but teaches us, but with the Holy Spirit teaches us, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Isn't it an interesting thing that that we're now told that the spirit will speak to us, not man's wisdom. I love that. I don't want to ever have man's wisdom. I don't ever want to go off having man's wisdom at all. I've mentioned that to you before on a previous show that, um, you know, and I used to run all those seminars and all full of man's wisdom, demonic wisdom, Hinduism, everything. No, no. God's wisdom works. God's wisdom is the one that we come and speak to people. I'm speaking God's wisdom to you, not mine. I don't have any wisdom. He's the, he's the author and the finisher of my faith and of my hope. So um, Acts 3, sorry, Acts 5, 32. And we are his witnesses to the things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. So as long as you continue to follow his ways, abide in him, as it says, and, and he will abide in you and the words, his words will abide in you. Then we know the Holy Spirit will then be with us with that. How powerful is that? And then here, this um, last one that I've got is Luke 4, 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led into the wilderness by the Spirit. Isn't that interesting? So here's Jesus. He's just, I'll give you the scenario. He's just been baptized by John. And when he comes out of the water, the heavens open. Father speaks down. This is my beloved son who I'm proud. Of. So there's that. OK, the Holy Spirit comes upon him like a dove. It wasn't a dove that landed on him. It was like a dove. So the Holy Spirit comes. Now, isn't this interesting? The very first thing the Holy Spirit does is it leads him into the wilderness to be tested by the devil and be there for 40 days. Isn't that an interesting thing? The first thing the Holy Spirit does. I've talked to some Christians that they go, oh, I don't really like the Holy Spirit. Why? Well, he led me to something that wasn't nice. Well, our Lord Jesus, who we follow, was led into the wilderness for a 40 day fast. It's not that pleasant. And into the wilderness and the enemy was there to to test him. But he was led there by the spirit. He didn't go there in his own will. He went there by the spirit. And that's the key thing here for me with everything that I've been teaching you and everything that I have that I've given you is the knowledge because people perish for lack of knowledge. So I want to give you the knowledge. But at the same point, 
I want to show you and point you to God. I want to point you to who he is and what he is and what he has for us. I want to point to him so that you don't look at me because I, I am not anything. I don't want you to, to think of other things that I talked about in the sense of the new age I, not either. I'm wanting you to look at how powerful God is and how he has given you the access to the Holy Spirit who has going to be or is going to be your helper, your guide. He'll lead you to all truth. So if you're ever not sure about the will of God, then ask the Holy Spirit. Find out about the Holy Spirit. Ask him to come. You don't need to do anything except just ask him to come and he'll be there. He'll show you and lead you to all these things. And there might be a time that he leads you to a certain thing like he did with Jesus. But the, the power of what happened for Jesus in the wilderness He actually, now listen to this, he actually, when he was tempted or tested by the devil, even offered kingdoms of the world, offered to him, even though he was there for a similar mission, but not with the enemy. He was, when he was offered that by the devil, all he used was the word of God. All he used, Jesus only used the word of God, just like I've been using here. That's all he used for you to be able to, to then access what you need in the sense of power. Jesus used only the word and it says the enemy left. That's all we have to do. So I want to pray for you now. I want to pray for you for for all of these reasons. In fact, if you're even right now wanting the Holy Spirit to touch you and start being in your life, just put your hand on your heart and I'm just, I want you to repeat after me. Dear Lord, I want you to send the Holy Spirit to me. Right now, right here. I want to feel his presence in the room right now. And Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit now gives encounters to everyone listening, everyone in their living room, wherever they are watching this, in the car, wherever it is, that the presence of God. Father, I pray the presence of God, the Holy Spirit shows up in their life and that from this point on will always be upon them, will always be in them. And that Holy Spirit, you will give them encounters. And more importantly, the Holy Spirit, I pray, will guide you, will help you, will, will, will give you power for the things that you need to do. That first scripture I read that he will help you in your weaknesses. So when you're weak, you can now call out to him. I want to I want to give you that hope that from this point on, anytime you need to call on Jesus, anytime you need to call on the Holy Spirit has already been given to you. I don't need Jesus to appear to me. I don't need the Father God to appear to me. All I have already, which is better than anything else in the world that I was ever given by my guru or anybody else, is the Holy Spirit. You, you call upon him, call upon him, ask him to fill you when you're about to do something. Ask him to fill you when you're about to do something that you need to do and just trust him and love him and he'll always be there for you. We'll see you next time. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com to connect with Alan, get questions answered and submit your prayer requests. Download the ministry app and let Alan equip you and inspire you wherever you are. Find great teaching throughout his CDs, books, eBooks you can download and more. And be informed with timely ministry, updates and exciting interviews. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com.